Hey guys, Captain C.A. Richardson here, freshly back from vacation and hosting a couple of tournaments down in the Florida Keys and Everglades National Park. Uh, today we are going to have a lesson. We're going to talk a little bit about tailing redfish. That's right, tailing redfish. Um, some of the tackle needed, uh, some great examples of what happened. And uh, one of the cool things, I mean, we saw so many cool things while we were in Everglades National Park. But one of the coolest is this little piece of footage right here of a giant loggerhead turtle, literally in mere inches, I mean mere inches of water, had no idea our Hell's Bay Eldora was there. Check this out. I'll get some gear together and then we'll talk about technique and tackle for tailing redfish. Check it out. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. find another crab or a lobster or something. Now that's a cool piece of footage there. Something very rare, something I had never seen before. See a loggerhead of that size, that classification, if you will, in such shallow confines of a flat with no deep water at all nearby. Pretty amazing. Just thought I'd share that with all of you. Now let's talk about the lesson. Uh, Fishing in Flamingo for tailors is a little bit different than, let's just say, fishing where I live here in Crystal River. Uh, and the reason why is, in many places, tailors are on mud or sand or oyster shell. Here, they're in heavy grass, like this eel-like stringy grass. It's, it's not even turtle grass. It's just this, this thick, thick grass. So you have to do things to get their attention. Now, in this case, we were throwing Z-Man soft plastics. Uh, one of my favorite is the jerk shrimps. It does extremely well. It's just got one of those shapes, if you will, that allows it to move through the grass very easy. It doesn't have what I would call any shoulders. So it's very accurate to cast because of its shape. There's no bulky appendages. And it slides, when you pull it through the grass, it slides through easily when it's rigged on a chin locks rigging hook. This is an eighth ounce, uh, four aught, and it does a really good job. You can find these at zmanfishing.com. So Z-Man jerk shrimps are extremely good. The four inch jerk shad in Houdini, one of my favorites. This is a great, great color. Uh, it's got a little bulk in the bait itself when you look at the back side here. So it lends itself to cast, especially in windy conditions, a little bit more accurately than the jerk shrimps. And then when we have poor light and you're sight fishing, whether you see the tails or not, it's really nice to have a, a swimming tail. These right here, the root beer gold, uh, one of my favorite colors as well, or the right stuff in the scented paddlers. This is a four inch segmented bait. Gives you a little bit more than just a sight fishing bait. It lets you search a little bit, especially when you're using it, again, the rigging hook. Now, if you're on sand or mud or shell or fishing fish that are, are tailing in potholes, here's, a, here's a, good, a good tool. I like using these little bucktail jigs. Now, these are made by Bugs. Uh, this is their latest. You cannot buy this right now. But this is their latest. This is the Ned Bugs. This will be out. And in fact, we'll probably sell them at CaptainCARichardson.com 
soon, um, probably later this year. Well, we're talking October, November, December. You'll probably be able to get these, but these are extremely effective when fish are finicky. This one's got a cool little brush guard so you can use it in thin grass. It's going to do a great job. Now, I'm going to talk about the rod and the reel requirements and some of the strategies to cast these uh, these fish. But while I'm doing that, I want to show you two videos of my wife. Well, two or three videos of my wife targeting these, these tailing reds. And yeah, we'll see how she does. I am a very critical coach. So take that in mind. <laughs> take that into account, if you will. All right. You go to the action. When we come back, we're going to talk about rod reel and casting strategies. Taylor right there. Might be a little bit behind him. He's going to the prop scar. Oh, he didn't set the hook. He did everything but set the hook. <laughs> oh, she's going to do better the next time. Just watch this. I promise. Going to the tailor. You give him too much room, babe. Way too much room. I mean, you might still get this one, but you can't give him that much room. Because you can't, you can't get close to him that way. By the time you get it to him, it'll be fouled. Yeah, you'll spook him. Come on. He, he got it. <laughs> real, 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 real. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Everything I said, don't pay attention to it. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Tail and reds. I mean, it is skinny, too. That's a good one there. It's going to be one of your best ones. Got to be. That shot's got to be right there. And this time, this time you stuck him right and everything. I mean, he's basically under. He needs a set of tires to be moving up here. Yeah, that was so awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come down and help you out. We'll take a quick pick and let this guy go. He looks like he's about 26, maybe 27. This way. Sight fishing with that Laguna shrimp color. Them back a little bit so I can get my hands on. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, is he a critical coach or what? But that's not it. I just want Blondie to get better at this. And in her defense, she does not get to fish this style as often as I do. Remember, I spend 250 plus days a year on the water and much of it is sight fishing. So for something that might be reflexive to me, it's a lot bigger challenge to some of you all that don't get to do it on a regular basis. So how do you, how do you beat this? Let's talk about the casting end of it first. Number one, the further you cast away from the tailor, the less likely you'll be able to make the intercept point perfect. So in this case, where the fish was head buried into the grass, absolutely has no idea we're there. When you make the cast, you can make it relatively close to the target fish. What's close? In most cases, I feel close is like three or four feet away, and you can get away with it if you smoothly feather the cast and drop it. If you're not that good at it, maybe you have to throw it six or seven feet away, but that's the most. That second presentation, Blondie had made it so far away from the fish, I thought for sure there's absolutely no way she's going to be able to line it up. But with manipulating the rod tip and everything, she was able to steer it right to the zone. And well, you saw she proved me wrong. But typically, three or four feet, six or seven. Now, if they're on rock or something like that, you might have to be a little bit more judicious depending on wind, light, water clarity, things of that nature. Now, 
What I typically do in that casting strategy and get it up there, you got to have a rod that's going to be accurate. So I don't use seven foot, uh, seven and a half foot rods or eight foot rods for, for, for that style. I almost exclusively use a seven foot medium action rod. You need the medium action to be able to gently throw these smaller soft plastics and, and little jigs like the bugs, okay? But you also need enough backbone to get a good solid hook set. And that's what's important. This particular rod is the Shimano GLF. I've got it on an Altegra 3000, spooled up with eight pound Super Slick V2 Power Pro. Eight pound is great because it allows for a little bit longer cast. You could get away with 10, 10 is gonna be fine. Uh, I have a short section, I say short, 24 to 30 inches of 15 pound fluorocarbon because we are fishing in extremely clear water, as you saw in the video. But in many cases, you can get away with 30 pound liter uh, in areas like I live here on the nature coast. This is all you need to be successful, is just a setup like this, a casting strategy like we talked about, and then a lot of patience. Now, tailing activity doesn't last a long time because the tides are changing, so you only have a small window. Sometimes you'll see 50 tailors out there, but you're only gonna get a shot at two or three or four of them before it's all over. So uh, temper your expectation level once again. Hey, all of you guys, if you enjoy what we're teaching you here at Flats Class YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I want you guys to be part of Flats Class Nation. It's my job to make all of you better anglers. I've been doing this for over 25 years and I can't wait to share more and more information with you, whether it's product reviews, fishing tips, destinations that we go to, television shows, podcasts, you name it. It's all there on Flats Class YouTube. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson, signing off.